One of the most common requests that I get on all of my GM guides is a breakdown of the builds that we use on a weekly basis. Now, we typically cover them at a pretty high level, but I think it's time to deep dive into the top three Grandmaster Nightfall builds for Warlocks this season. This is the first of a three-part series covering the best Grandmaster Nightfall builds for each class, with Hunter and Titan to follow up with their own dedicated videos next week. I'm above, and if you enjoyed today's video, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated appreciated, but before we dive in, I want to showcase a game that I've been playing on a daily basis for more than three years now. We have five long months before the final shape, so there's no better time to get invested in a brand new game. Raid Shadow Legends has more than 800 champions, spanning over a dozen unique factions, including a new rarity of mythical champions, the most powerful heroes yet. Remember getting your first exotic and how it instantly transformed your entire Destiny experience? Well, with the brand new primal shards, you can now relive that moment by summoning mythical champions who have the ability to metamorph between two incredibly powerful forms. You can use these champions to help you conquer the brand new Cursed City, Raid's biggest update ever with more than 100 unique stages of rewards. So what are you waiting for? Use my link down in the description below or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses like the free epic champion Drake to help get your journey started. And once you're in game, you can use the promo code RAIDXMAS for even more bonuses. Join the 80 million players who have downloaded the game already, including me, Above Destiny, where you can join my clan D2 Raiders to start progressing. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring today's video, now let's get back to the builds. First up, we have a build that has erupted in popularity this season, and that is the Infinite Ignition Polaris Lance build. This gameplay loop thrives around chaining ignitions by using Polaris Lance's exotic perk, the Perfect fifth. This states that landing four precision hits loads a delayed solar explosive round for your next shot. This explosion will inflict 60 scorch on hit, giving us a massive portion of the scorch needed to ignite an enemy target. Ignitions provide intrinsic unstoppable champion stuns, insane single target damage, and incredible AoE ad clear. Pair this with Dawn Chorus, an exotic helmet that provides improved scorch damage by 200%, and you have one of the best single target weapons in Destiny. We also also have some incredibly powerful solar artifact mods this season, and I'd argue they synergize better with this build than anything else in the game. First up, we have Kindling Trigger, a mod that inflicts 30 Scorch stacks to unscorched enemy targets. And when we combine this with the perfect fifth, we've already achieved 90 of the 100 Scorch stacks needed to ignite an enemy target. Throw in Ember of Ashes, which provides an additional 15 Scorch stacks, and a perfect fifth explosive will now cause an ignition. And what's crazy about this is the fact that Scorch will linger on tankier enemies like bosses and champions, which means that each time we proc this perk, it'll cause ignitions that chain over and over and over again. And since ignitions count as a solar effect, we can use Revitalizing Blast for a 15% weekend on priority targets. This effect permanently staggers bosses and absolutely decimates champions, making this season's tanky PsyOps Battlegrounds bosses significantly easier to deal with. We can then pair this with Flint Striker, which states that successive solar weapon precision hits, which we'll be doing constantly with Polaris Lance, now grants Radiant for 10 seconds and can be refreshed infinitely. This provides a 25% boost to our damage and gives us intrinsic anti-barrier capabilities. So with a single weapon, we can now stun unstops with ignitions, while Flint Striker gives us Radiant for intrinsic anti-barrier rounds. When you consider that four of the six Grandmasters this season have unstoppable stoppable and barriers in them, this build gives you the flexibility you need to change your heavy and special weapons depending on the nightfall. Rays of Precision then takes this single target build and makes it an ad clear machine. This mod states that while radiant, solar precision final blows cause enemies to ignite. And since Flint Striker constantly refreshes our radiant timer, this is basically just built in ad clear that blows up entire rooms. These are the core ingredients that make the Infinite Ignitions build tick, which means that everything from the super all the way down to the fragments are totally personal preference. If you're sick of using well, Dawn Chorus improves Dawn Blade's damage by a staggering 90%, making it an awesome ad clear option for your fire team. And if you need a well in harder GMs, you always have it available in your back pocket. As I mentioned earlier, Ember of Ashes is the only mandatory fragment here as it gives us the additional Scorch stack 
attacks needed to permanently stagger enemies with ignitions. Ember of Empyrean is another fantastic choice, extending your radiant and restoration effects with solar weapon final blows, but again, it's totally personal preference. And the only key armor mods to note are Heavy Ammo Finder and Harmonic Siphon to generate silly amounts of heavy ammo and orbs of power when using Polaris Lance. This is by far my favorite build this season, and if you haven't used this just yet, please, please, please give this a try. Our next build went from one of the worst subclasses in the game to one of the best Grandmaster Nightfall Slayers that Warlocks have to offer. Stormcaller receives some major buffs with the release of Lightfall, first in the form of a 20% damage boost to pulse grenades, second being the removal of Elemental Wells, and third being the nerf to Storm Grenades. Elemental Wells used to fuel ability regen on grenade final blows, with Storm Grenades dominating the meta due to their insanely high damage output. We now rely on Ionic traces to cycle our abilities, and nothing creates them better than pulse grenades on an arc warlock. Our first aspect, Electrostatic Mind, states that defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an ionic trace that will track towards you, granting ability energy and making you amplified. We can then pair this with Arc Souls, which grants arc buddies to you and your allies when you step into one of your rifts, which will be supplying constantly thanks to the volume of ionic traces we can produce with this build. Your Arc Souls also grant increased damage and rate of fire while amplified, which will be at all times thanks to Electrostatic Mind. And remember, Electrostatic Mind also generates an Ionic Trace when we defeat enemies with Arc abilities, and yes, that includes Arc Souls, so the synergy here is quite obvious. Your first thought is probably, yeah, but you're never gonna kill anything with Arc Souls in a GM, but that couldn't be further from the truth. You've gotta remember that Nightfalls are littered with trash mobs like Thrall, Shanks, and War Beasts to try and overwhelm you, which is where Arc Souls provide a ton of value. Each time you kill one of them, it passively generates ionic traces and feeds you even more ability energy. This makes the Healing Rift a key component of this build, and provides nice survivability when you're in a tough spot. The melee is totally personal preference, but I like to use Chain Lightning as an additional source of jolt. The Pulse Grenade is by far the best part of this kit, as it deals an insane amount of damage thanks to the 20% buff we mentioned earlier, and is made even better by our fragments. First up, we have Spark of Magnitude, which extends the linger duration of our Pulse Grenades by an astounding 50%. This not only helps them deal more damage, it also makes our next fragment, Spark of Shock, even better. This gives your grenades the ability to jolt targets, which provides intrinsic overload champion stuns and generates ionic traces like crazy. Next, we have Spark of Ions, which creates an ionic trace every time we defeat a jolted target. And yes, this stacks with Electrostatic Mind, which means that it will generate two ionic traces every time we defeat an enemy with our pulse grenades. This will refund roughly one one third of your grenade instantly after throwing it, which significantly improves its uptime. And last but not least, we have Spark of Resistance, which provides a flat 20% damage resist that stacks with tier 10 resilience when surrounded by enemies for extra survivability. This gameplay loop is already extremely powerful, and we haven't even covered our exotic just yet. The Fallen Sunstar synergizes perfectly with what Stormcaller does best. The exotic perk Ionic Conductor states that Ionic traces you create create, move faster, and grant additional ability energy when you pick them up. Nearby allies will also get ability energy each time you collect an ionic trace. This means that we gain even more benefit from the gameplay loop we've discussed today without having to change any part of our playstyle. Unlike the other two builds on this list, the Fallen Sunstar Jolt build is completely based on ability uptime, and our mods are going to reflect that. I went with Ashes to Assets on the Helmet for bonus super regen on grenade final blows, bolstering detonation for additional class ability regen each time we cause damage with our grenades, and firepower to generate orbs on grenade final blows. We can then pair this with Distribution and Bomber on the class item for additional ability regen each time we cast our Rift, powerful attraction 
to automatically pick up nearby orbs of power and recuperation on the boots to gain a burst of healing for each orb that we pick up. With this setup, you'll be jolting entire rooms and make overload champions a complete non-factor. And last but not least, we have a build that has completely altered the way we can approach Grandmaster Nightfalls. For the longest time, the Aeon Gauntlets were a staple of the GM playlist, generating heavy ammo for your teammates when finishing champions. This was the first time we were given a consistent source of heavy ammo outside of just seasonal artifact mods, which is important because honestly, ammo is rarely on your side. Then came the Cenotaph Mask. The Aeon's stronger, more handsome, okay, maybe not more handsome, older brother. This exotic states that damaging a vehicle, boss, or champion with a trace rifle will mark them as a target, and when an ally defeats that marked target, special ammo is generated for you, with heavy ammo being generated for your allies. This means that we can tag high-profile enemies from range, use our heavy weapons to get the final blow, and then get that heavy ammo right back like we never even used it. It's faster paced than the Aeon's alternative, and is much safer because you can do this from range. Now, this is obviously quite strong on its own, but what really separates Cenotaph from other exotics is the fact that it can stack with additional copies of itself. This means that when multiple members of your fire team use this exotic and tag the same champion with their trace rifles, it will produce heavy ammo for each person who marks the target. So if you have three Cenotaphs in your fire team, you're guaranteed at least one brick of heavy every single time you kill a champion. And if you're the one to secure the final blow, you actually get two bricks in return. Turn. The build itself is pretty straightforward. Simply equip Well of Radiance, the Cenotaph Mask, and a Trace Rifle to mark targets, and you've pretty much got what it takes to absolutely nuke Grandmasters. Rockets will do 99% of the work for this build, so we don't really need an ad clear super with this kit, which is why we opt for Well of Radiance. It allows you to play extremely aggressive while ad clearing with your rockets, and gives you top tier survivability in the toughest GMs. I know this playstyle isn't for everyone, but if you want to play fast and learn to farm grandmasters quickly, this is the cream of the crop. As for our aspects, Touch of Flame is the most important here, with the choice of Heat Rises and Icarus Dash being personal preference. The Healing Grenade will be an essential part of our kit, and Touch of Flame will enhance these healing effects, giving us Cure and Restoration times 2 for 4 seconds. We'll also take Phoenix Dive for another source of on-demand burst heals, and these abilities paired with Well lets you get away with things that you definitely shouldn't be able to do. It allows you to play extremely aggressive in GM environments, which helps lead to quick clears. We have two fragments that are crucial to this build's success, the first being Ember of Torches, where powered melee hits grant you and allies Radiant. This is a 25% damage buff that also provides intrinsic anti-barrier, which means we can use our rocket to stun champions. The other vital fragment is Ember of Empyrean, where Solar Weapon Final Blows extend our Radiant and Restoration effects. This timer caps out at 12 seconds, but can be infinitely refreshed as long as you're slaying adds. Simply throw your charged melee to proc radiant, use your healing nade to proc restoration, then go crazy slaying adds with your rockets to repeatedly extend these timers. As for weapons, you'll want a galley in your fire team to empower your legendary rockets with wolf pack rounds, with the other two rockets matching the weekly surge. We'll then pair this with trace rifles to mark targets with Cenotaph, with the third slot being reserved for either overload or unstoppable stuns. If you have Path of Least Resistance crafted, I highly recommend Shoot to Loot, as it allows you to do your typical rocket spam, then collect heavy ammo from a distance while simultaneously auto-loading all of your weapons. And if you don't, no big deal, any trace rifle will do. Key armor mods include scavs and matching surges on your boots for more efficient ammo drops and higher damage, and we can then pair this with blast radius to gain armor charges when securing multi-kills with our rockets. This allows us to take advantage of Argent Ordnance, a final column artifact mod that grants a free 15% damage bonus to your rockets and stacks with all of the other buffs we've discussed today. This build gives you top tier survivability, ad clear, and ammo economy at all times, making one of the most potent GM builds we've ever seen in Destiny. Well guys, that concludes my top 3 Grandmaster Nightfall builds for Warlocks during Season of the Wish. Comment down below with your favorite GM builds and we may just highlight them in the future. Thank you again to Raid for sponsoring today's video and remember that you guys can get some insane free bonuses using my link down in the description below for a limited time. Anyways, that's it from me, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.